What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're gonna be upgrading our version of Flutter up to the newest 1.9, which just came out recently. And that's gonna additionally get us up on Dart 2.5. So we're gonna be doing that. And then we're also gonna upgrade some of our dependency packages. Really, we're just gonna do two today. We're gonna to do Cloud Firestore and Firebase Auth. But, but seeing how that's done, you can go and do the other ones yourself if you have other dependencies. All right, let's get started. First, let's upgrade Flutter. So to do that, we can open up the terminal and you can do this right from uh, this Android Studio here, or you can open up a terminal window separately, either way it'll work. But we just want to, I mean, if you want to check yourself, if you want to check your, um, your version, just so we can see that it works, so we can see that the version right now is the 1.78 and we're gonna to wanna to upgrade that. So actually we can just run Flutter Upgrade. And this should run uh, a few commands. It might take a bit of time. I actually haven't run this yet, so I'm not sure if we're gonna, if this is gonna be very smooth or if there's gonna be issues in the app afterwards. Typically though, I think Flutter's upgrades don't, don't really have any breaking changes, but I haven't actually gone through like a, a major upgrade like this yet, so we'll see. All right, so that just finished up and you can already see it's saying uh, right here that the Flutter channel is now 1.9, but again, if we just run that Flutter version, uh, you can see we're on 1.9 now and our Dart version has also been upgraded to 2.5. If you noticed up at the, when we first ran that, our Dart version was 2.4. So we're on the newest version of Flutter and Dart. Let's see if our app runs the same way. Let's actually go ahead and kill it and then rerun it. Uh, I do not expect anything to, to be erroring, but, but we'll see. All right, cool. That took a bit to get the app back up, but just time-wise it was loading, but it is working. So let's see. Uh, really the only, I guess we'll log out because some of the feature functionality we have is with signing in. Um, if we sign into our account with password, cool. Login looks like it's good. Uh, the only other thing we have is searching for a location. So if we do maybe New York, okay, we start getting our auto populating. Looks good. So we can still select our dates. Uh, yeah, looks good. Continue. Not seeing any real bugs at all. A little slow, um, but my computer I think is just a bit slow. It's uh, it's almost time for me to get a new one. So so yeah, that looks good. Um, yeah, cool. We can convert that. This needs to actually change to be only happening when we're an anonymous user. That button should only be there. But yeah, so upgrading to one point nine should not break anything in your app. If it does, comment below and. I could try and help you fix it, but I think I think it should not break anything. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is upgrade our Cloud Firestore. You can see here our Cloud Firestore is zero uh, twelve six, and if we look at Cloud Firestore right now, they're on zero twelve nine. So twelve point six is what we were on. So. It kind of just, this is just telling you what was pretty much added in that version. So if we just kind of skim through this, we can see kind of what's changing. And really what we're looking for is if it has a breaking change, because a breaking change is gonna mean that our code is going to break. And we're gonna to need to actually change something physically in our code if we're using that specific piece of the, of the package. So I don't see anything with breaking changes, which is good. That means we can probably upgrade this and not have to change anything. So let's go ahead and go ahead and copy this. We're going to change this here to be, oh, to be, yeah, the 12 point uh, four. We don't need to add the plus four because if you just leave it, if you just leave it as this, the, the plus four actually means, and I, this might be easier to show, like if we leave, if we leave just 0 0.12.9, let's say we upgraded it back when it was just 0 0.12.9, right? Then anytime, if we upgraded to this version here and left it as 
as we're seeing here without any plus on it then when plus one came out and plus two came out and plus three came out our app will be able to just upgrade to those automatically um another thing that you may or may not know is that if you just don't even specify the version here it'll just default to the, to the latest version now the problem with that is is those breaking changes right so let's say let's say for instance there was a breaking change here let's say 12.9 had a breaking change right if we if we were still on 12 if we didn't define 12.6 and then we went and added another you know, added any other package here and hit packages.get, it's going to upgrade that. It would upgrade this package as well if we aren't defining what version we want to be on. So this this here, this uh, carrot, I suppose, is saying we want this version or a version that's that's matches this with uh, additional stuff on it. So if it has any of those pluses after it, we can we can still handle that. Uh, all right, so since we have done that, we can now hit packages get, and that should get us the 0.12.9. All right, cool, so that is pretty uh, painless there. Again, we can rerun the app, and definitely we wanna not do this with just hot reloading because we wanna make sure that the app itself is is using this new version. And when you do just hot reloading, it's not necessarily going to reload these um, these dependencies for you. So go ahead and rerun the app, and then we'll quickly just do a test to make sure that our Cloud Firestore is working. All right, so the app's running. So this is really Cloud Firestore is what we're testing. So let's go ahead and just add another um, a new suggestion here. So we can type this and dates we'll leave as are continue finish so it looks like it's writing back fine and pulling data fine so yes i think this works good um and again that's what we would expect because we didn't see that the logs uh listed any breaking changes all right the final thing we're going to update in this video is going to be the firebase auth so this one actually does have some breaking changes which you can see um the current version is 0 0.14 i'm using 0 0.11 and this is what i use to pretty much do all the videos for signing into firebase so if you go to the change log again and go down to where 0 0.11 is we can see there's a breaking change on 0 0.12 so first let's go ahead and upgrade to 0 0.12 and get that working and then we're going to keep going up we're gonna keep upgrading up every time there's a breaking change. So this one has about three different breaking changes. So let's take them one at a time. Um, 0 0.12 is gonna be the first one. So go ahead and, and this one I've actually already kind of done and put, this was talked about in the comments of the video a good bit. So do 12.0 and save that and then upgrade packages. If you run it right now, you're gonna see that it will crash in certain parts of the app. In fact, you can see already over here that the app files in the app get highlighted in red because we're already upgraded the, like these no longer are valid. So I'll link to this down below, but I already do have a branch out there for upgrading to 0 0.12. And this was, uh, I guess this was created based on the comments. So I'm just gonna do those updates real quick right here. The main thing is, is that with this with this change, and you can see what, what it says right here, is that the breaking changes signed in methods now return an auth result instead of a Firebase user. So retrieve the Firebase user using user property on auth result. So really all that's saying is that before when we were calling the Firebase, um, when we were calling the Firebase sign in methods, it was returning us a a Firebase user itself. Now it's returning us if an auth result, and then that auth result has a user property on it. So we just need to call the user property. Uh, we just need to call the user property before we can call the UID. So pretty much that would just look like that user. 
And another thing that I changed here is right here, we're calling this the current user, which is not actually really accurate anymore because it's, it's actually the auth result now. So let's just keep that variable name um, consistent with what it actually is. And then this would be, need, this would need to be changed everywhere, the current user. Let's see, line 42. This just needs to be calling the user first. Um, for the same reason there. Here, we have one more of those. So three places where you'll have to update that. And again, the it is all gonna be in GitHub, so you can see it there. Let's see, update username is giving me an error now. That the, oh, okay, same thing here. This, we need the actual user where before we were giving it the user, now we're giving it the, the user on the auth result. All right, so let's quickly test that we can still log in uh, so we can sign out, so that looks good. And we can sign in with, and that works good. Perfect, so now we are on 0 0.12. Let's go ahead and update to the next one with breaking changes, which is actually 0 0.13. This breaking change, let's see, replaces the user metadata creation timestamp with the with creation time, uh, as well as last sign in timestamp turns into last sign in time. So these I'm actually not using in the app. You might be, and the you might be using that if you're kind of displaying to the user when they signed up or when they signed in. If you have like a profile page. That's gonna be a pretty simple change as well. So I'm actually, but it's, it doesn't really affect my app. So I'm not going to, I'm gonna kind of just skip this and go forward with it. But if you do have this in your app, go ahead and upgrade to Firebase 13, which I guess I'll do right now and kind of show you. So upgrade to 13, Firebase Auth 13, upgrade the packages. Mine should not have any errors, yours might. Um, one way you can check to see if you are using that is do a command shift F, which is gonna let you search your entire project and go ahead and search for that creation timestamp, which is what, this is what the old one was. Now, you will see some of these come up, but check over here on the side what file it's coming from. These are all coming from files that I did not create. So that means they're, they're files from the packages themselves. You could do the scope, or you could change the directory to be the lib, which is where we write all our code. Um, nothing's coming up for that. So again, I, which is as I expected, because I'm not using those. Um, but if you are, it's going to be really similar to how the user thing was, except actually you're just going to be changing wherever it says creation timestamp to just say creation time. Cool. So let's go on. Uh, no breaking changes here. Uh, another breaking change on 14. Um, and typically, you might be noticing this pattern already. When it is a number jump here, that means there's a breaking change. So you notice from 13 to 13.1, there's no breaking changes because 13 is the base number. And 13 and 13.1 won't have any breaking changes from 13. Uh, so 14 has a breaking change, which is uh, this get ID token. Again, this is something that I'm not using in my app, so I'm not gonna need to deal with that. Uh, it now re returns an ID token result instead of a token string. Uh, use the token property of the ID token result to retrieve the token string. Okay, so this is very similar to the, to the breaking change that 12 had with the users. Um, so if you are using this, it looks like it used to return uh, token by itself, it was just a token string, and now it's returning a token result that you could probably call token result dot token, and that will give you the string that you were getting before if you're using this. Uh, if you were using get id token, um, so yeah, I'm not gonna need that either, so I can go all the way to 14. And this is the most recent one, but I don't need the plus five if I just do 14. And there we go. Upgrade the packages again. All right, let's quickly just check one last time that the logout or login works for this. So logout works again, sign back in. 
And yes, everything is looking good. So, all right, great. So now we're on the current version of Flutter and we've upgraded uh, at least two of our dependencies to the current versions that they're on as well. Uh, now, you definitely want to keep your dependencies up to date as, as, as often as possible, especially when there's breaking changes, it's always a good idea to kind of update your dependency then. And the reason for that is, as you notice, we, we were about three versions back on the Firebase auth. So in this case, I really only had one version that actually caused me breaking changes, but if all three of those did cause me breaking changes, and let's say I went from, you know, version 11 all the way up to 14, there could be potential that there would be like three issues in the in my code base, right? So I always like to upgrade one at a time, even if you waited, you know, even if you waited in your three versions behind. I, I, was, I would still recommend doing one at a time. And that's just, just to make it easier for you. And then if there is a problem with it, you'll know that, you know, that specific version is what's causing it instead of just being like, kind of, oh, one of these three versions caused this problem. Yeah, but definitely try and keep, especially while you're developing it still, keep your dependencies up to date and I'll try and do the same. But now that you see kind of how the dependencies are upgraded, if you do see an issue in the code, notice the dependency version in the video versus the, the version that you're using and then check out if there's breaking changes on that on that pub.dev log because that is mo a lot of the times probably going to be your problem especially if there's a breaking change then it's definitely going to be your problem um yeah so we're all set now on a clean slate of new versions of of everything and we can continue on with our code so excited for that ciao for now